Welcome to our services in Eastertide. We have been through the journey of Lent and now we take another journey of equivalent length as we move from Easter Day through to Pentecost, as we reflect on the experience of the first disciples, those first followers of Jesus who heard his message and who shared in the joy of celebrating his resurrection. As you enter into this time of prayer, may it be a time for you which draws you closer to God and to one another. Blessings on you as you share in this time. Please let us know if there is any way in which we can help you. Take some time in silence. Pick up your Bible and be ready to be able to follow the readings and pray with us for yourself as well as for all who are around you and all around the world. Welcome to our time of worship together today. Today we're celebrating the feast of Saints Philip and James here from St Luke's Anglican Church in Toowoomba. There are different options that are given in our calendar to celebrate Philip and James either on the 1st or the 3rd of May. But on this Sunday in the pattern after Easter, usually we would be celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday and so that's why we have our Good Shepherd window behind me here. Please stand and join with us or relax if you want to but join with us in singing this joyful Easter time.
This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We join together in the Venite, which is a setting, it's Psalm 95, which we're going to say. It's a song of triumph. We say together, O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as Israel did in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me, put me to proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed the generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We come to bring our hearts open before God. Confession and repentance are at the heart of the Christian faith. They are at the turning point between unbelief and belief, and they are the continual reminder to us that our earthly natures are very close to the surface. In the same way that we cleanse our hands by washing as we begin a day, so it is good to remind ourselves in prayer that without the presence of God's Spirit in our lives through the day, we are likely to stumble because we are stained by the consequences of sin. Confession earths our lives in the love of God, keeps us humble, and enables us to be a blessing to others through the day. And so we pray together. Unclutter our lives, Lord. We have too much, consume too much, expect too much. Grant us perspective to see this world through others' eyes than just our own. Grant us compassion where there is need to play our part not turn aside. Grant us gratitude for what we have, our daily bread, the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord. Give us space, simplicity, thankful hearts. God, who knows and loves us more closely and deeply than we know and love ourselves, forgives you invites you, calls you, inspires you to live the blessing and fullness of life which you are given by God's grace. Amen. Amen. I now invite Evie Rennick to lead us in Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verses 1 to 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day tells it to another, and night to night communicates knowledge. There is no speech or language, nor are their voices heard, yet their sound has gone out through all the world, and their words to the ends of the earth. There he has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out as a bridegroom from his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run his course. Its rising is at one end of the heavens, and its circuit to the farthest bound, 
and nothing is hidden from its heat. Lord God, whose blessed Son rose in triumph and set us free, grant us the fullness of life he promised us, that through the Holy Spirit our hearts may possess him whom our eyes cannot see, the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn that we will sing now is inspired by that psalm, but also Psalm 148. We stand or sit or be as you are to join in singing, let all creation dance. I now invite Val Smith to read for us from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18 to 21. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 18 to 21. The Lord waits to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Truly, O people in Zion, inhabitants of Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes shall see your teacher. And when you turn to the right, or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I now invite Lizzie Smitty to read for us from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses one to eight. This is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, 
of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ had died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Val and Lizzie and Evie. I now invite Oliver to read for us from the Gospel of John. Jesus Christ, according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. Glory, Glory to, to you, me. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't, do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Hear the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. As a response to the Gospel reading, we sing together, Come my way, my truth, my life.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Martyrdom. Martyrdom takes perseverance. When you hear the word martyr, I wonder what comes to mind. Would you be surprised if I said that I think the church needs a lot more martyrs? In fact, it could be argued that this is our main task, to train and prepare and shape and form people to be martyrs. That is a significant part of the purpose of the church. Now, before you report me to ASIO or Border Security or some other department which has responses to terrorism as part of its brief, I mean, sorry, I mean that, put the phone down and just bear with me for a moment. I'm not at all talking about blood on the streets or actually anywhere. Martyrdom is not intrinsically about dying whether in ordinary or spectacular ways. The early church began to make lists of people as martyrs, especially those who had died for their faith, and especially when dying was a result of being a martyr. The dying was an unfortunate consequence, but those who were remembered as martyrs, like Philip and James, who we remember today, were enthusiastic and successful martyrs for many years before their untimely deaths. Now, I don't mean either that they complained a lot. That's what we sometimes mean when we say somebody is a martyr. We may say he or she is a martyr. And what we usually mean is that that is someone who manages to turn every inconvenience in their lives into drama and lets everybody know about it. Who doesn't love the stories of Christopher Robin and his friends, including Winnie the Pooh and, of course, Eeyore? Eeyore could be identified as a martyr type in that narrow definition of someone who always finds something to complain about. Here's a glimpse of Eeyore. Good morning, Eeyore. Lovely day, isn't it? Wish I could say yes, but I can't. Oh, well, Eeyore, you wouldn't happen to have any honey lying about, would you? You see, I seem to have run out. <laughs> oh, yes, good idea, Tommy. Perhaps I should look in back. <laughs> Bother. No honey in here either. What? Eeyore, what has happened to your tail? What has happened to it? Well, well, there's a layer. That accounts for a good deal. That explains everything. No wonder. I toss that in because we can laugh at that clip and perhaps even laugh at ourselves a little as we find ourselves letting things that happen in our lives get us down. Though really one of the wonderful things about Eeyore in those stories is that here is a character who is not really being a martyr in that sense of someone who perhaps seems to enjoy complaining, but perhaps he's a character who has a depressive illness and in the whole story is just accepted and loved. In doing that, his friends show the best kind of martyrdom themselves. Not by putting up with him, they show love. Martyr in English comes almost directly from a Greek word which simply means to bear witness. A martyr is someone who speaks from their heart about the things that are most important to them. A martyr is someone who shares what is most valuable because they care about people around them and want them to be blessed by what they have learned. That's actually what's at the heart of the series of tips on sharing good news, which we have been taking, and I hope using, and letting seep into our living over the past six months. Sharing good news is not easy. 
we can easily be misunderstood. In this age where there is a lot of information, but it seems sometimes a scarcity of wisdom, when we want to share something which is valuable to us, like our experience of the love of God and the perspective that the good news we find in that relationship and in the Bible gives us on life, that can be hard to share in a world cynical because of information overload and a lot of fake news flying around about life. It seems to me that martyrdom takes perseverance. When we get discouraged, we need to find ways to be brought back into joy. Bear with me as I share a joke. Joe, he was baptised Giuseppe, but we'll call him Joe, got a letter from his grandson, Carlo. Carlo was in a government institution because of a few things that he'd done wrong. Papa, the letter said, I've been wondering how you are and I've been very worried about you. I'm so sorry that we cannot see each other, but know that you are in my thoughts and prayers every day. Joe wrote back to his grandson, Dear Carlo, how I long to see your face again. I am feeling so down and sad. I try to find joy in my garden, but the earth where I usually plant my tomatoes is so hard. My poor back is so old and tired and sore that I cannot break the earth to dig there. You know how much I love my tomatoes and the joy that they bring me. Perhaps next year I will find more strength. Your loving Papa, Joe. Carlo wrote back, Papa, please do not dig in that patch of garden. That is where I buried the money that I was accused of taking from my corrupt boss, your loving grandson, Carlo. <laughs> a week later, Joe wrote again, My dear Carlo, I have just come inside after planting my tomatoes. Soon after I received your last letter, a large van with many official-looking people with shovels arrived, and they dug and dug through that patch of ground, they seemed very frustrated when they did not find anything there but worms. Once they left, the ground was perfectly prepared for me to plant my tomatoes. Grazie. <laughs> when the ground in which we are seeking to plant seems hard and unyielding, try different strategies. Dig around a bit and don't give up. Perseverance is another word for faithfulness. I looked for an example of someone who persevered, who didn't give up even when put down, and who found a friend whose encouragement made all the difference. And to be able to do that, I couldn't go further than Charlie Brown. Here's a clip where Charlie finds that encouragement. Bought my kite. Today's the day. I can feel it. A kite? Today? In the middle of winter? Come on, guys. Only Charlie Brown. A new kite? A perfect breeze? It all feels just right. Now that the kite-eating tree is sleeping for the winter, we have nothing to fear. <sighs> Lift off! <laughs> Don't you ever know it? 
give up, you will never get that kite to fly. Why? Because you're Charlie Brown. <sighs> Thanks, Linus. Listen, Charlie Brown, ignoring what my sister Lucy says has enabled me to make it this far in life. What would I do without a good friend like you? <laughs> Don't give up. Be a martyr in the best way. Someone who shares what is inside you that gives you life. It's worth asking, what is it that we are sharing? What is it that we are persevering with in wanting others to be able to see and appreciate and understand? What is it that is life-giving? It is not just good news about Jesus and resurrection and things that happened in the past. That's not itself the good news. It is the message about a call to live with love, with compassion, with hope, and to persevere in sharing and living those things, even when it is difficult to do so. It is an invitation to love as we are loved. That is the gospel. That is the good news. That is what Philip and James and so many others have lived for and for which they have died. Sharing love may sound like it is easy, but when it challenges those who would rather live with selfishness, and when living love confronts prejudice and injustice, then often there is kickback. I have a clip from another of my favourite movies, The Blind Side, based on a true story which picks up some of that. Stop the car. Big Mike. Hey, my name's Leanne Tui. My kids go to Wingate. You said you were going to the gym. School gym's closed. Why were you going to the gym? Big Mike, why were you going to the gym? Because it, it's warm. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. Seen that look many times. She's about to get her way. Come on. Come on. SJ, make room. Get inside. Come on. Now, if you know the movie, then you will know that supporting Big Mike was not easy. Confronting the layers and clumps of prejudice all around his life was certainly not easy. That prejudice was from many people, black, white, privileged and struggling. It could easily have stopped the blessing of what was happening, but for the sake of love, that family persevered. In their living, they were martyrs. In their living, they bore witness to love. Martyrdom takes perseverance. So hang in there and keep loving until you die. You're unlikely to die soon or terribly, I certainly hope. But keep your martyrdom going as a positive, wonderful, exuberant expression of love.
Thank you, Peter, for that music for reflection and for all of the music you've been offering as part of our worship here. We join together in the Benedictus. We say together that song of Zechariah from Luke chapter 1. Please join with me as we say together, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. With the church throughout the world and across the ages, we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We join together in the prayer which Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect, the prayer for this celebration of Philip and James. Almighty God, whom truly to know is eternal life, teach us to know your Son Jesus Christ to be the way, the truth and the life, so that following in the steps of your apostles, Philip and James, we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite Jennifer Woodman to lead us in prayer. Jennifer has had a number of things that have happened in her life recently, and as sometimes happens when we offer prayer, that comes close to our hearts. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Today we celebrate a saint's day. We remember with thanksgiving the Galilean Philip, called by your son to apostleship. Help us to follow his example in bringing Nathan into Christian community by telling our friends about Jesus. We also give you praise and thanksgiving for St. James the Less, who after the ascension led the early church in Jerusalem and was martyred for his faith in the 62nd year of our Lord. Lord, may we, like him, learn to listen, to watch our words and care for widows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nation so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust 
sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness in public and private life. Lord, creator of the earth and might of the sun, teach us to be mindful of our use of water that the earth may feed the starving millions. Teach us to give generously, acknowledging all goodness comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we are weak, but you are strong. Take our fears and frailty and transform them into hope and a sense of purpose. We thank you for the blessings Australia has received at this challenging time. We pray for the church throughout its world as its members attempt to love one another in community. We thank you for our clergy as we pray for their difficult task. Empower them as they worship you in isolation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we uphold before you all in need, the compassionate, the sick, all who feel alone. We pray for our own community that it may stay strong and healthy until happier circumstances prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Holy God, Father, risen Son and Holy Spirit, receive the dead and bless those they leave behind. We pray for those who may be afraid and alone, are dying from the COVID virus. May the light of your love ease their passing. Lord, in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jennifer. The eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. We join together in singing Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Thank you for joining with us together in worship wherever you are. Tomorrow is a public holiday in Queensland and so we won't have our usual morning prayer but we will return to that pattern on Tuesday. Next Sunday we will have the service coming from All Saints, one of our churches here, one of our other churches here in Toowoomba. And we will be using the form of matins from the Book of Common Prayer. We're looking forward, as some of the restrictions begin to be easing, towards a time when we will be able to gather together physically again. That time is not yet, but it will come. God give you grace to follow Philip and James and all the saints in faith and hope and love, and to know the fruit of God's Spirit in your lives, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining together with us here at St Luke's Anglican Church in Toowoomba on this day, on this Sunday in Eastertide. We hope that you have been able to experience the love of God enfolding you and surrounding you and sustaining you through this time and in the week ahead. If there are any ways in which we can help, please let us know. Please contact our parish office. And if you would like prayer for yourself or for anyone else, please let us know and we will be able to include you in the prayers that we offer here, both on Sundays and through Facebook on weekdays. If there are particular hymns that you would like to join in singing, then let us know through our parish office and we will try to be able to incorporate those through this time and into the time ahead. Blessings on you and on your family.